So have you ever dreamt of writing a book? Hmm. Then you're going to want to stay tuned for this episode where we interview published author Jen Marie on her path to successful self-publishing. Right. Join us today on the Wandering But Not Lost podcast. And now your host, Jen O'Brien and Matt Emerson. We do have an exciting episode today. We have Jen Marie back in the podcast studio. Jen, she was on episode 20 of the WB wow. podcast. <laughs> we've only had 267 episodes since we've talked to Jen last. Awesome. So let's see. I wonder if some things have happened into her life. But uh, so we'll bring her in just a second. But I, you know, I've known Jen since about 2009. It, She's an inspiration. I've loved working with, oh, Jen, Jen actually worked with Jen, uh, Jen for a little while yeah. too. Um, she's an inspiration. There is something, she brings a little bit of magic when she walks into a room. It's, it's really pretty, pretty cool. And I've been blessed, you know, you always have those work friends, right? But they're always, a lot of times they're those friends that when you leave that particular job, they just kind of go away, but Jen has not. I am happy to see that not only is Jen a, was a work friend, but she's also turned into an actual friend as well. So uh, let's bring Jen on into the podcast studio and get her to tell her story. Welcome. Hi. Hello. <laughs> Excited to have you back in the podcast studio, Jen. It's exciting. I mean, I'm Me I'm looking too. forward to catching up catching up on the uh, the adventures of uh, is it Elizabeth and Adam? I believe it is the protagonists of your 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 books, right? Yes, that's correct. And you remember that's amazing. Yes, Elizabeth <laughs> yeah, and Adam. Pretty, you know, it, it's it's cool because these are you know. Um, written for more of the the younger kind of paranormal romance kind of style correct am i right there Got, yeah I use that? Yeah, yeah right i think yes, what is. i think is so cool about that jen is you kind of got your inspiration when you were kind of actually a tween right i think if i recall I from our, the last conversation the movie somewhere in time was a inspiration for you right i love like that movie yeah Right? No, right? It's I love that movie so much. It inspired the whole series yeah. at 13. <laughs> yes, that's correct. That's exactly what happened. That's cool. And her books, yes. Intertwined, um, Tethered, and Raveled, um, are about mm -hmm. the, the uh, these characters. There's time travel, there's curses, there's vengeance, there's mystery. You know, there's all kinds of stuff that goes on <laughs> in the books. And I'm, I'm excited to hearing, uh, you know, about... You know, I'm sure our listeners are excited to hear about, uh, you know, just kind of how you develop these characters and, you know, the whole the whole process kind of from A to Z. So I'm going to shut up because I'm talking too much. So we'll just turn it over to you, Jen. <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah. So I'll just start from the beginning right where you were. I, I came up with my book series, Intertwined, when I was 13. Um, I had watched Somewhere in Time. And I just fell in love with the whole concept of time travel and romance, of course. I just saw that movie and, and was blown away by it. And I remember going to bed that night and just laying there awake, just thinking, like, how can I make my own time travel story? And I, <laughs> I was also kind of a morbid kid. I liked horror. I liked paranormal stuff. I was just like, so I was like, how can I make this a time traveling story with, with a haunting? <laughs> and then, and then I also into reincarnation. So I was like, I want to throw reincarnation in there too. And so I, I thought about it that night, and I was like, really into um, really beautiful plantation settings. Even then, I was mm. always into that kind of setting. So right away, that was always going to be the setting. And I pictured a big white mansion with um, with some kind of haunting going on inside of it. And I just thought that would be so cool if you're haunting yourself. Like if you were moving into a house and you're experiencing activity or whatever, and it's residual activity, a different lifetime, and it's your lifetime. Like I just thought that was the whole thing. And so that concept has always stayed the same, always. Um, it's evolved and the plot around that and the characters, that's evolved as I've grown up. And, um, but that concept has always stayed exactly the same. Um, so it's been really fun just through the years to grow with my book, grow with the story and grow with the characters because the characters grew up, you know, with me. I have probably written 10 versions of this story just from wow. 13, because at 13 I wrote it. I wrote it. It was like 80 pages. I was like, this is, I wrote a novel. You know, it was a short story. But <laughs> I was so, I was like, it's a novel. And I mean, to me, I, I wish I still had it, but back then we were still on floppy disks 
and that disc got wow. damaged. So I don't have it anymore. I have the disc. It doesn't work. <laughs> I kept the disc because there's a little sticker on it my dad put on it, and it says reunited. It used to be called reunited. It was not oh. intertwined. Um, so I still have that disc, and yeah, and now it's um, – buried somewhere but <laughs> I yeah so anyways going through the years it's changed and um I think it was around I think I was yeah I was working with you I was around 30 I was 30 when I decided to really take it serious and write this series from scratch and and really turn it into something real and um that is when uh, just to kind of give you a bit more background on what inspired the 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 rest of the book, I guess, the book that it, as it is today, I, I traveled to Wilmington. Have it either been there to Wilmington? No. No. <laughs> okay. Um, so Wilmington is like the East Hollywood. It's where they film pretty much all of those, you know, notebook, the notebook. I don't know. A lot of shows are filmed there from the WB. So I traveled there because I love the setting. And um, when I went to Wilmington. I saw uh, there was a big plantation that you could tour and it was right on the Cape Fear River and it had these big rice fields and it had the big white antebellum mansion with all the Spanish moss trees. It just wow. it had a chapel. It had everything that I was looking for in a setting for my book. So I, I toured the whole estate. I took pictures and came back and I would love that it was on the river. That was something that, that became a huge part of the book, the river. So I was so happy about that. That inspired a lot of plot lines. Believe it or not, a river inspired a lot of plot lines. Yep. Um, but so that was um, really exciting to actually have a, an actual place in my mind when writing the story. And then also while I was in Wilmington, I took their ghost walk tour. So there's a lot of history there. And I, um, the ghost walk tour and that I, I incorporated it into my book as a mm -hmm. way of explaining the history of the plantation. Because in the initial draft, it was just, oh, the character goes home, looks up on Google, what happened here at this plantation? My editor was like, no, we don't want, we just don't want to read your, your character on Google. <laughs> if you're going to introduce history, do it in a fun, engaging way. And I was like, oh, duh, there's the ghost, there's the ghost tour. Why, why do I like, do? So I remember, um, yeah, I, I incorporated the ghost tour and on the actual ghost tour that I took, there was um, the, the tour guide, his name was Jamie. He was so funny. He, he came dressed up in a double breasted opera coat with a top hat, spectacles. He had this really curly hair and he was in character the entire time. He had a cane and he was just so funny and I loved him. And so I, he inspired a major character in the series. He actually was the ghost tour guide in the book, but he became a main character. He was one of the um, he was one of the reincarnated characters. So just drawing inspiration from that and so many things went into the story uh, from everywhere. That I, I just couldn't. You know what, Jen? It's, so, it's so uh, awesome <laughs> because you are taking inspiration from wandering, which you know is near and dear to our hearts very much, right? So I, yes. I love that, right? So it's 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 focusing the 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 creation the creative part of your story in actual your passion, what you what you fell in love with back in North Carolina. So that's awesome. Yeah, yeah, it was really really fun. All the places. There, there's more there more places there, but anyways, going back to the writing. Um, Writing the book was, it's been, oh God, like a 20 year process, 30 year process, um, because it's just changed so much. And I didn't know how long it was going to take me because I'm, as you know, I am a perfectionist. <laughs> I, can't, I can't publish anything that's like, it's all right, or it's good enough. I can't do that. Like, I, if I had, this would have been published a long time ago. Like, but I, the first few drafts, I was like, mm, I could do better. I can do better, you know? And I just, I always do that. I push myself because I really want to be um, happy with it, like really happy with it. So it's taken a long time. Um, but I am really, I'm glad that I, that I allowed that because I am really happy with the way it is now. Um, and so getting through the writing process, and now going into the publishing process. Um, so yes, that was, a, so it's, let me just start off by saying it, it's changed. Publishing has changed so much today, even from five years ago. And that's when I last published a book, it is so different now. How you, I, I'm so excited to publish now 
because the tools and resources available now were not available even five years ago. So when wow. I last published a book, you had to go to a um, you had to go to a distribution platform and manually format your entire Word document to their specifications. Wow. And in order for it to be up, in order for it to be uploaded and then to go to all the retailer platforms, right? So if you did anything wrong, it could it could corrupt the whole thing and you'd have to start over or try and figure out what you did. Um, so it, wow. it wasn't hard. It was just a very manual, tedious, time consuming process. And a lot of authors would just outsource, they would just hire someone to do it. But I wanted to understand all of it. I just did it myself. And I, I liked, I just like the learning, you know, figuring it out. But um, you'd have to do that on Smashwords, which would go to Kobo, Apple, and um, uh, Barnes and Noble. And then you would have to do that again on Amazon's platform because they were oh, exclusive. Wow. They work exclusively with authors. You would have to do wow. it again to their specifications. And then you'd have to do it again to do a paperback. So you had three different platforms where you'd have to manually format the Word document. So it was it was just a lot of work. Um, but now, you don't have to do any of that. Now there is a distribution platform that works with Amazon as well as, as um, the other major retailers. So you don't have to do three different platforms. And with the click of a button, you just upload your Word doc, it automatically converts it into EPUB, no manual formatting. No and, way. Wow. And yeah, and it, this is the best <coughs> part. And you can select based on your genre. Let, let's say you wrote a mystery or a romance. You can select, oh, classic mystery style or romance. And it will take that and, and pretty much decorate the interior of your, of your book. It'll give you oh all of the, 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 all the styling, the chapter headings, the font, the transitions between scenes will be in the tone of your story. So you can get, a, you know, you know how, if you open like a Stephen, a Stephen King book, it's gonna look like more of a horror type font or, you know, you're gonna get all of that with just a click of a button. And it'll, it'll make it look professional and not so basic. And that's something you could you could only get with a traditional uh, publisher. You could not get that, you know, going through a, a distribution platform. Wow, so that that is a huge that's a, a huge way. huge change, Jen. That's wild. Go go, yeah. go back that one step though to the editing process. Yeah. What's the editing like? Yeah. Do you oh, hire someone? Do um, you? How did you go through yeah. like getting an editor, finding an editor, or whatever? Oh, thank you. Um, yeah, so finding an editor, I um, was reading a lot of self-published books, and I would look at who they use as an editor. Um, if I liked the way the book was edited, or, and I thought that it was like very little errors and um, everything flowed, I would, I would go, okay, this, this must be a good editor, and I would just check out her website. So that's how I found mine. Her, na her name is Jen Summersby, and she, uh, she has edited many successfully published books a self-published book. So these authors are now very successful. And so I reached out to her and that's how I found my editor. And what you, what she did is I, I give her my, my Word document. She goes through it, you know, she reads it line by line and makes notes on the right-hand column. So by the time you get your book back and you start growing through the pages, every single line, talking every single line is gonna have something on the side. And it's just basically just looks like a bloody, <laughs> <laughs> what he got I could have read all the way down the side. <laughs> I was like, oh my God. It's really hard to go through your your baby, right? It's it's like your baby and you're just like having to take all the criticism and there's like, you know, there's good stuff too, but it's mostly like fix this, fix that. This doesn't make sense to me. This isn't flowing. Uh, I don't think this character would say that. This is not in line with this. Like it's a lot of, you know, you have to take all of that in and be like, okay. I, I can do this. I can fix it. Like, <laughs> and not, you know, get discouraged by it, I guess. Um, so for me that, yeah, that's what the editing is like. I have to go through all of the notes and um, sometimes they're quick fix fixes and sometimes it's more, it requires more by revisions and rewrites. You know, some chapters have to go entirely and sometimes I have to create an entirely new chapter to, to fix whatever's going on. Um, so that's kind of how the editing process is with 
when, how we do Jim, it. When you, when you're, when, yeah. if you kind of break this, this into three uh, sections, like, you know, the whole creative process and actually writing the book, the editing process, and then that publishing process, it, as far as timeframes go, and I'm sure this will be different, obviously with everybody, you, you clearly yeah. have been thinking about the, what your story was going to be for years, right? Maybe even decades, you could yeah. say but that editing process. How long typically was that for you in the three experiences that you're, you've had, you know, with the, with the publishing? Like months? Are so, we talking with the editing? I would say with the first books, um, it took about like eight months yeah. to to really, because to, even though I would go through all of the reading notes, some, I would still go, I would still um, go through the story over and over to make sure that everything is grammatically correct because I didn't her, I use her again. Each time you use an editor, you're paying, you know, you're, you're paying by pretty much by the word. It's based on word count. So, you know, it's not, it's not, it's, it's, it's a lot, it's a lot of money. <laughs> so yeah. at least for me, I think, <laughs> but so I, I would use her once and then after that, I would just rely on my own editing skills. So it, for me, it would take about eight months to really be okay. I fixed everything, but now let's make sure it actually sounds professional. It sounds like a real, you know, book that's been edited. So um, I, that's how it's taking me. But for the third one, it's different because it was, it was a rewrite and a re, it was a very long, it's double the length. So it was a rewrite and it took much longer to, for me. I'm gonna have to go through, through the editing process again with the third book. I've, I'm right now editing it myself, but I'm going to have my editor look at it. Um, actually, she's, she's never looked at the third book. So this will be the oh. first time, but I would say about eight months, yeah. Yeah. Well, see, that's significant. I mean, you know, it's, it's it, 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 it goes back to the time when you said, you know, you wrote, you, you had your, your book and you were like, I'm done. I, I wrote a novel. Right. But, but oh, like, no, it's, no. it's, 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 there's a lot more that goes into that. And you have to have that, uh, that dedication, oh, yeah. which clearly you had in these books. I mean, I remember talking to you way back when you were going through that first editing process um, uh, and intertwined and, and that it was a little bit like a little kick in the teeth. Sometimes you're like, wait a minute, what do you mean that you wouldn't say that? Right. Oh, yeah. Yeah. But you feel it for sure. Yeah. <laughs> you have to have a thick skin for that, for editing, <laughs> for what, the feedback, I should say. Okay. So let's yeah. talk a little bit about the book art, the cover art for your books. Cause I know that's a huge, that's a huge oh, part yeah. of it, right? You know, the covers can sell, right? They sell yes. your books. So how did you come I, up with that? I have it's right oh, yeah. here. <laughs> oh, oh. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So the, the book cover. Um, so Okay, before I show you this, the book cover is you'd have you could, back then you could hire a book cover designer that would just take a stock image, put it on a cover, and design it around whatever you envision. Right? Um, that's how most authors do it because it's the, it's the most cost efficient way of doing it. Cost, sorry, cost effective. Um, the thing with that is your stock image might end up on a lot of other book covers, right? And you if you want something unique. You, it, when in case I really did, I went through, I went ahead and hired a freelance artist to come up with the specific photo or image that I wanted on the book cover. That that alone took three months, and that's what this is. So as you know, Matt, and I know you hate snakes. I do hate snakes. Yeah. <laughs> but this is what I wanted snakes on my cover. So this is, here's the, the fin, uh, here, you can see it. Here's the finished draft, right? Finished cover. Ooh. Now here's the snakes. So the snakes is what was illustrated by a freelance artist. Here's the beginning draft, just so you can see where it started and how it was just kind of a ropey type snake, kind of very thin. And so this is what he came up with. And then it started kind of evolving from there. Um, but just so you can kind of see, this is notes made by my husband because I couldn't, I was trying to explain to the artist what I was wanting. So he divided it into four quadrants and was like, make this loop thicker, make it skip down here. Like, so this is my husband helping me. And then, um, and then here's all my notes going on. Sorry, it's kind of hard to see. Wow. But yeah, so it kept going. And then eventually here's me trying to draw the heads. I don't know if you can see it her this way. I'm trying to draw yeah. the heads and I'm like, this is what I want to look like. You know, and so anyways, he eventually got there and this is this is the initial draft of the snakes before um, you start to get the scales on and all of that. So it was really, this was 
many, many revisions and many, you know, back and forth communication, trying to so hard to explain what you envision to someone else and, and get them to like create it, <laughs> like understand it. You don't realize that I think like, you know, you just don't know until you start going through the process, like how hard it is. Um, anyways, and this here is kind of the finished product all by itself. So once nice. I had this, then I took that to a uh, book cover designer. Now this is even funnier. This took a long time too, because I thought um, they said, oh, what kind of book cover are you looking for? And I'm like, I want something hauntingly romantic. I thought that's <laughs> clear. Then I know what that means. <laughs> so I said that, and this is what she came back with. Like, what is that? Uh, sorry, oh. here you go. Like Superman, Superman. It looks like it's <laughs> really not romantic. <laughs> no, I, I'm like, this isn't hauntingly romantic. So what I learned was the designers I, were probably told, you know, you, you're going to have to do more of a process of elimination of what they really want, because sometimes they don't know what they want. Sure. So I think they're more like, this is not anywhere near you want. Okay. And then they kind of went on from there. But so it went through many stages um, of what it's you know going to look like. And that was blue at one time. And it just kind of, yeah, it at one time had lightning. Sorry, oh. here you go, had lightning. Anyways, and obviously this has no color. So I was like, what are we gonna put in the middle? You know? <laughs> so it was, yeah, just this alone was a big process, going back and forth. But what you ended up with was out. the romance. You, you ended up with the romance in the middle, which was yeah, awesome. I, I wanted, yeah, see, I love that. That it's really beautiful. draws you in. Yeah. Yep, it's beautiful. <laughs> Yeah. What I love about these so book covers, I, Jen, and I'm, I, haven't, I haven't seen, have you actually done the premiere of the book, the, the kind of unveiling of Ravels yet? Because I love how the book covers are all similar, right? They match and they're, they're, they're the, the one for Tether was story. beautiful. I mean, you know what I mean? I'll tell you right now, it's going to make a beautiful little set of books on your bookcase. That's what I'm, you yeah. know what I mean? Because they just, they're, yeah. even though I don't like snakes, they're very cool covers. <laughs> Yeah, I, I know. I, I wanted to, I did want to keep them similar and I do yeah, the, the third one's going to be a red cover, like completely red, with obviously the snake somehow in the middle again. But um yeah, I I, I do like that they're all kind of cohesive and um I'm very happy with the final the final look. And on the, the second book sorry, go ahead. No, go ahead. Oh, on the second book, um we we kind of deepened the colors, but the rose of my, my brother actually helped with the rose on the second book. I didn't have to go through a creator. He just took what I had and, and made it work with, with, with what I wanted for the second one. So yeah, it was easier the second time around. Everything was already done. So. <laughs> right, right, yeah. Well, I'm looking forward to seeing the reveal of the, the reveal of Rebel because it's going to be, uh, I'm sure yeah. it'll be beautiful as well. In the show notes, everyone over at yeah. WBNLpodcast.com, we do have a, cop, a, a picture of the three covers. Well, the two covers plus the coming soon tease of the, that's what I knew it was red because that was the, the tease of that is red too. So that's cool. All right, Jen. So we've talked a little bit about the creative process. We've talked about the editing. You've talked about the, the book, um, you know, kind of coming up with the cover art and kind of the new process for getting it published, which sounds freaking mm -hmm. awesome. Oh my God, the time savings there are incredible. Um, so once you click that go, like, so then what? It's like, okay, just wait for the money to pour in. I mean, what do you do to promote? Oh, and yes. How do you start getting the word <laughs> out about your book? Okay. So when I published the first two books, um, I think I've told you this, but I, I intentionally did not market my first two books. And the reason why is because I did not know how long it was going to take to publish the third one. And I wanted to publish them or launch them close together. But I also wanted to get real feedback on the first two just to see if it was what the what the response would be. So I published the first two and I consider it a soft launch. It's, it wasn't a real launch, <laughs> soft launch, just to see what the response was. And I, I did a blog tour on the first two. So what that is, is you you give your book to um, bloggers, people you don't know, it goes through a third party. So you never talk to them, you never see them. They read your book and then they post a review of it on their blog. And it, so, and there's like 25 bloggers. So on blog tour day, your book is going to be reviewed on 25 different blog sites. Wow. And you go, you go through each blog and you get to read them, which is a very nerve wracking process. Yeah, oh my God. No kidding. <laughs> so, but that was a really, I'm glad I did that because it was, 
so, it was really exciting, really fun. And I got to see real, you know, when you read a review, like it's, and you see the, you can feel their excitement. Like that was what I got to experience. It, it Sure. There's going to be the, the, the ones that are like, it ended on a cliffhanger one star and then it was like yeah, what <laughs> like, you're gonna get you're gonna get those but a lot of the ones um that were excited it was just it gave me like okay like the momentum and the excitement to keep going mm -hmm. on the rest of the books um so i that's why i did that but i did not market it i did not want people to discover it because i really didn't know how it was going to take to do the third one and as i'm glad that i know myself look what happened it's been years so I, I did, I, I'm glad that I waited because now I can um, do a hard launch of the entire series. So how you do that, and um, I'm going off of other people's experience, other um, self-published authors that are um, very successful now. And um, what, so what's worked for them is you take your first, you take your first book and you make it free. And that, because people, audiences don't know who you are and, to get people to want to read it, you'd have to market it worldwide on some on on a scale that only traditional publishers can do for you. Yeah. So if you don't have that kind of money, it, you you're still gonna you're gonna invest either way. You're gonna you're gonna have to you just have to do it in a different way. <laughs> so and yeah. so making that first book free is gonna put it um, in front of audiences like in the fr you know free book if they call it the starter um, the starter book list free book starter list. And that is where they'll probably discover it. And then if they love it, they will buy your next two books. And then what you do is you up, you just charge the next two books to compensate for what you lost in the first book. So you double, you, you essentially double the price or whatever you want to do. You just, you can kind of tear it out where the second book is maybe double the price. The third book's going to be a little bit more, you know, because if they really love it, they will buy the next two books. Yep. Um, so that's kind of the strategy behind that. And then, um, and now what was not available five years ago is, uh, is because there's a bigger market for self-published books, people who are working in traditional publishing houses are now leaving to do freelance work for indie authors. So now you're getting professional services from editors, from graphic designers, from book cover creators, and from book marketers, people who specialize in launching series, and not just any series, but your series, like uh, your genre, you spe they specialize in paranormal romance or fantasy, horror, whatever it may be. These are people who specialize in those types of genres and how to market that to, to your type of audience. So you're getting, they're just getting resources and experiences from people that can actually help you launch your book where that was not available five years ago. Yeah. So I'm, that's why I'm so excited to publish now and, and do a real launch, a hard launch. Wow. Now. Well, that's yeah. exciting. So when do you think you're going to be able to start rolling, do, get, getting into that marketing? You know, are you looking like by the end of the year this year or what's your plan? Yeah, I will. Yeah, I would. I, I'm definitely aiming for the end of the year because I feel like the pop, the editing will be mostly done by that time, and that's when I'm going to start um, looking into someone helping me launch launch the three books. So I, what I want is to launch is to get a, a, some kind of excitement around it before it's actually released. So that way, there's the more that you can um, drive sales and pre-orders the more it will spike your sales on release day and put them yeah. in the top seller list or in the number one um, book of the week list. So like it, as long as you can get on a list somewhere that's yeah. going to increase your sales exponentially, you know, it's going to help people find it and discover it. So yes, that's, that's the plan is to hire someone to help me launch the book and to market it and then start staggering out the release dates and driving pre-orders. Oh, that's fantastic. I just I love your story, Jen. It's very insp uh, inspirational. It's exciting. And you too can have snakes in your stocking, maybe this year at Christmas. Who knows? Yeah. Well, <laughs> yeah. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> hey, Jen, let's, let's jump into our ask three questions that we have for, for you today. Yeah. The first question we wanted to jump sure. on today is what holds you back? Because this has been a process for you. And I'm sure there were some things that, that were stumbling blocks or hurdles for you along the way. Oh, oh yeah. Writer's block. <laughs> I mean, life, can, oh goodness. Like when you have writer's block, it is, you can literally know what you want to write. You can, you, it may not, there's different kinds of writer's block. There could be kind of where you just don't know what you want to write at all. And then when you do know what you want to write, but you cannot get out a sentence, 
your your brain is not functioning. <laughs> That's yeah. the kind that I had. I could not for the life of me make a sentence flow for like months. And I was like, what's wrong with me? Like, I, I don't know if I was burnt out. I don't really know. But that held me back. <laughs> yeah. I'm fine now. And it's everything's everything's flowing again. But there was a time for whatever reason I know that it just was not happening. Um, so much better now. That held me back. Obviously, um, just when you when you're doing anything creative, there's always there's so much vulnerability. So that can that's you know fear of criticism, fear of rejection, all of that can hold you back. I think yeah. feel your failure, you know, just what anyone would feel. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, well, that's what I, I think absolutely. mainly. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> so next question we have for you, Jen, is that you know what's what really has inspired you? You know, what are there people in your life? Obviously, I'm sure that Adam, your son, has been a little inspiration for you, yeah. and you know, since he's been around, you know, there are books, podcasts, you know, videos. I mean, what really you know kind of has helped to inspire you to be creative and get your get your goals uh, achieved here? Uh, well, um, okay. Well, this one, I love this question because um, what? So what, one of the people that inspired me was when I was in fifth grade. Um, I was a strange child. A lot of my teachers didn't like me because I didn't pay attention because I was always daydreaming and, <laughs> and writing <laughs> and not not paying attention. So I had one teacher though, and she wasn't my actual. She was a teacher, but she um, she just understood me, and she one day came to me and gave me this book. It's um, the diary of Anne Frank. And, oh, wow. and Fra so I was, yeah. yeah. And she wrote a little, she wrote a little note. I still have this book and I keep it on display, but she wrote a little note inside. And I was just to be Anne Frank's age, reading Anne Frank's diary was just so inspiring. Like wow. I, I remember reading this girl's story and just being like, wow, like the, I, under, she, I she, like I felt I just related to her and I just she inspired me so much because she was just so young and she was very mature for her age. She was very introspective and she had an amazing story to tell, even though I mean, and she's going through all of this in the middle of puberty. So it's like I was just like, wow, this, this girl. And so I, this has been a huge inspiration for me ever since I read this book. I have not stopped writing. I have I have journals just like her pretty much the majority of my life. Like most of my life is in journals. It's, it's amazing. Um, so uh, this was huge. And and the woman, the teacher, Mrs. Walker, that gave this to me, she, I remember this day very vividly. She, I love her just even though I only knew her for a short time, but she will always be dear to my heart because of this. Um, so that has been a major inspiration for me. And it's kept me writing all this time. Wow, <laughs> yeah. that is a great story. I did not know that story, Jen. How did I not know that story? Yeah. That's that is I really. I don't know. That's fantastic. <laughs> that's wow. true inspiration yeah. right there. Too. The last really yeah. is. <laughs> well, that's okay. yeah. Last question number three is: you know, what's the best uh, advice you have for entrepreneurs or maybe future uh, book authors uh, to thrive Fine now authors. and into the future? Oh goodness! Keep uh, just keep trying, keep going. Um, I think honestly, like no matter how hard it is, if you fail, if you you know don't feel like it, you're getting anywhere with what you're trying to do. Just keep going. <laughs> I really feel like that's the best advice. Keep educating yourself. Keep uh, growing from your mistakes. Keep learning. Like just be open to everything and just give up. Just keep going. Like that's awesome. on, that's well, that just, that's how you get anywhere. <laughs> yeah. Hey, dude, I do have one more question, and this is something Jan and I have been talking yeah. about for a while, and I think it's not just Jan and I; everybody's talking about it right now. Um, you know, with the kind of the advent and the popularity of AI, how do you feel? Or how do you feel that's going to affect and change the process, or, or change the way people are actually publishing? Or what are your thoughts on AI? Great question. So you know me, I. Um, you know, I love technology. I love, I love technology. So I'm, I'm not afraid of AI. <laughs> I think AI can be a very useful tool. And I think it can be um, a great assistant to help you like, I was talking about it with my husband, I was like, I think if you're in the middle of if you've got writer's block, and you can't get past a sentence or get past a paragraph, and this pair is not important, you just need to get to the next scene or the next chapter. I'm gonna probably use AI. I just get me through this paragraph so I can get going on the rest of the book. You know, there's nothing worse than being stuck and you're just like, oh, I just want to get to the next chapter. So to me, I think it can be a very useful tool. And it's 
um, right now there's obviously a lot of controversy on like AI and plagiarism and copyright because it, you know if you're having the entire book by AI yeah it's not really your book you know I mean it's your vision but you didn't write it so uh, yeah there's gonna there, right now there's uh, it's not there's not going to be any copyright protection on a completely AI generated story. Um, and I think AI will eventually write stories in, 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 in some, in some genres take the place of authors. I think it'll be um, easier for AI to do that with the formula for like, um, stories, like the really easy reads, entertaining ones, romance books. Those are, they follow the same formula. So they're easier to just, you know, mm -hmm. produce on, very quickly. I think the really intricate, um, unique stories, I, I just don't see how that can ever be um, produced the same way as it would by like J.K. Rowling's or, you know, Sarah Mass. I mean, I just don't see how, how AI is gonna produce a book series of that magnitude the same way J.K. Rowling <laughs> Do you yeah, know what I'm saying? Like, so, <laughs> it can in that. Yeah, it's certainly a different pr a process. And until the AI can get actually get out and wander, you know, they're not going to have those life experiences either. Hey, Jan and I call it the AI, we don't call it AI anymore. We call it the uh, intelligent, IA. yeah, IA, the intelligent assistant is what we call it. So oh, uh, we, agree with we can concur with you. Yeah. Yeah, we That's concur perfect. completely with what you're talking about, Jim, because and I'm I'm happy to hear that you are not a, you know, that you have embraced the concept because it's here, right? And um yeah. you know, there are ways you can utilize it that can actually give you quite a boost. Absolutely. So cool. Well, yeah, definitely. Well, Jim, yeah, we are so excited definitely. that you <laughs> So excited that you were here today and, and kind of walked through the whole process with us where I, you know, congratulations on getting where you are because I feel like I've been, a, I certainly haven't been a part of the process since we were 12 or 13, but I've been a part of this process for a long time and it's so exciting and how it sets you on fire, right? The energy that you bring to the, the, the whole process is so clear when you talk about it, when you read your books, when you, it's just, it's, it's a very, it's a very cool process. So congratulations all oh. that. Yes. Keep us posted on, mm -hmm. um, you know, when you get the, hey, when you reveal the cover of that book, you let us know. And we'll update our show notes because oh. we're going to have all the information about Jen over in our show notes. We'll make sure that you have all that, uh, that speak for you. Jen, any other, any other questions yes. or thoughts? No, this was just awesome. I, I'm so inspired. I am inspired by your oh, story no. and inspired to, and I thought hopefully it inspired a lot of other people that everybody always feels they have a book in them. And I think we all do. And now you just have to jump in and it, you just, inspired us to realize it's not as hard as it used to be. Now, maybe it's hard to get the information out and get, you know, do all that, but uh, very cool mm -hmm. uh, stuff you shared with us today. Thank you so much. Uh, yeah, thank you for having me. This has been awesome. Thank you so much. <laughs> Good luck with your series and your launch, for sure. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. All right, everyone. This was, this was episode 287. You can find all those show notes over at WBNLpodcast.com. Um, uh, like I said, we'll have links to a lot of the stuff that, that uh, Jen had talked about, it, links to go over and check mm -hmm. out her books. Um, I'll even put a link to our first podcast back in uh, whenever that was. Uh, back at episode uh, 20 uh, good stuff in there too where she goes a little bit more into the details of the locations that uh, she uh, pulled inspiration from back uh, in North Carolina as well so uh, go check that out great stuff today um, as we always say everyone get up get out live the life you've dreamed align connect and prosper and be forever wandering but not lost get it all in there get it all in there <laughs>